Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about interesting cards or very cool decks to play around with. And today we're, uh, well, in the Halloween uh, atmosphere because uh, the Sauvin event is in full swing but we're gonna do something entirely unrelated we're gonna be uh, looking at a alchemy slash druid Skellige deck today and I'm actually dressed apart because I'm actually dressed in a uh, Skellige purple today but uh, today we're gonna be looking at the high as a kite deck so we're gonna be using battle trance as our leader ability so battle trance is one of the new leader abilities from uh, the leader ability rework from a bit ago and it allows you to spawn and play murder room once whenever you want so in any round you want to so murder room if you're not familiar with it can do three damage to a unit but then boosts that same unit up to well, well by nine points and whenever you play an alchemy card it also heals a random allied unit by one if any are damaged of course so i want to work my way down this deck so um well the other way around we're gonna work from the bottom to the top so we can check out the uh, first round cards first and then go into the later rounds with the more powerful cards of course uh, down below we have the classic Svalblood Priest and Armored Drakkar combo. So the Priest can damage a unit right next to it by 1 and then boost himself by 2 at the end of every one of your turns. And the Armored Drakkar can tank those hits because it has 2 armor and every time it loses all of its armor it either boosts itself by 1 or 2 depending on the amount of damaged units on the other side of the field. Um, that's one of your cycles. You can also use the Priest with the biggest card in this deck, the Draco Turtle, which we're going to check out in a minute. Um, but in the first round you want to just start things off slow. The Crow Messengers can do that as well. So the Crow Messengers summon all copies of the, their, themselves from the graveyard to the same row. And if you hold an alchemy card, they also pull the copies from the deck, which is really handy to have some easy tinning because we're going to have alchemy cards in our hands regardless. Then the Cloakran Druid can just benefit from those two Crow Messengers immediately by putting her in between them and she boosts them both by two. That also works with uh, a particular unit, a particular Druid you should be playing at the very first round, the Crow Mother, who also spawns two Crows, so those two crones, Crows can also be boosted by the uh, Druid, which is really strong of course because that's basically eight points for five provisions. Um, I also tossed in a drum and berserker, but that's not really to, uh, that was just to fill some provisions. Uh, but we also have Freya's Blessing, which is an alchemy card and allows you to resurrect one of your bronze units and play it again. So definitely good targets for those are the Svalblood Priest, if you still have a Drakkar on the field or the other way around. Uh, and if you have neither of those, you can just pull the Crow Messenger out and you pull both of them out of the graveyard in one go. So that's a definitive uh, eight points when that happens. Uh, then of course in the alchemy stance we have two options for removal so this is going to be the the pain point in this deck it doesn't have a lot of removal but it does have a lot of point generations so that's what you're going for but it, you do have two options so giga scorpion decoction can damage a single unit six times and delirium can split six damage evenly across well randomly across an enemy row then of course we're going into the beefier druids. We have Gramis uh, who can purify a unit on order and it refreshes his ability on every alchemy card too, especially very useful against Nilfgaard to counter those pesky locks and poisons. Uh, then we have Ermion who functions as a tutor for any alchemy card in your deck. Uh, specifically either the control options that we just talked about or Sigdrifa's right, who allows you to summon a Skellige unit from the graveyard, which is really important. It summons a Skellige unit from the graveyard so you don't play it again. So try to focus on units that are strong on their own and don't have a strong deploy uh, ability, which is basically every unit in this, uh, every gold unit in this deck. Uh, so we have Jutta, 12 power but damages herself by 6 if she is the highest unit on the field when played. That gets bypassed by Sigdrifa's right. So if you summon uh, Jutta with Sigdrifa's right you get a guaranteed 12 points. Covenant of Steel is our very strong defender who can also keep gaining armor if he's damaged. Um, and you can also resummon him with Sigdrifa's right. Well them actually because it's a woman and a man on the, the image there. Uh, Crow Mother is very important to play that in the first round because she actually respawns from the graveyard whenever you play an alchemy card and she is in there. 
And then, of course, the biggest card in this deck is Draco Turtle. Um, so whenever this unit loses its armor, it boosts itself by the amount of armor lost. And as long as it still has armor, it will keep generating one point of armor at the end of each of your turns. So putting Murtrome on the Draco Turtle gives you 12 points immediately because the three damage you do also gets transformed into points. And if you can do that twice, uh, that's just yeah a 30 point uh, power uh, Draco Turtle, which is really, really nice. Then, of course, to uh, complement the Druid and Alchemy archetype, you also use the Scenario Gedaneath, um, which allows you to first spawn a Crow Clan Preacher. We haven't talked about her just yet. Uh, very strong if you can get two on the field. So if you have one on the field, it, she boosts herself by one every time you play an alchemy card. But if you have two, they each boost themselves by two instead. So that's four points if you have two of them on the field for every alchemy card you play. Or three, of course, because three is also possible because Gedaneath uh, does spawn uh, one at the start as well. And every time you play a druid, the scenario progresses. And in chapter one, you get the Crow's Eye Resume, which spawns three crows if you have a druid on the field. I did, uh, if that's not the case, then you only get two. And then at the final chapter, you play another murder room. So you have two murder rooms in this deck, even though there's not a single one in the cards, which is, yeah, sometimes risky, but... It's, uh, it definitely gets the benefit on the Draco Turtle. But because of that, it's really important that you protect your Draco Turtle. Because your Draco Turtle is going to go really high points wise. So you either need to defend it with a Covenant of Steel or just wait very, very uh, to the very end of the round to play the Draco Turtle and benefit from those points. And then one spicy addition from myself. Uh, well, the entire deck is my creation, but I decided to also include Geralt Erden. Because in today's meta, Geralt Erden is basically the perfect ender, uh, the perfect uh, way to end a match, because he just resets the power of all units in a row. And hopefully I can show that off in our next example match. Uh, you can check out the deck composition, you can either copy it from what you just saw, or you can see it on the Play Gwent website as well. The link is in the description down below. So check that out and uh, leave a like there, because that's always appreciated and just uh, makes the deck appear to more people. But let's dive into example match. And by the sounds of it, we get a monster deck. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Don't make me laugh. So that could be a Keltullus deck. The chances are, well, pretty big that it's going to be a Keltullus deck. Uh, not too much of a problem. I think I can work around that. So we get both the Chrome Mother and the Messengers. Uh, get the Tech You Plunder, but we don't have a Drakkar or the Draco Turtle, so let's get rid of that. And then, of course, we do get a Drakkar. Um, and I don't think I need Resurrection just yet. Um, although I do need an Alchemy card in my hand, I still have Sigrifa's right. Well, let's get rid of. Yeah, Freya's Blessing. And we got a. Um, okay, Preacher. That's not that good. Because we do not have the Draco Turtle in our hand, and we do not have the Gedeni, the uh, scenario in our hand. So that's too bad. Um, but I can probably make this work. Let's start off with the Armored Drakkar. We don't have a Priest, but it is a good way to just bait out some uh, removal options. So if they want to take that out, they can just go for the Parasite immediately. Although I don't think they will probably go for that. Yeah, I'm guessing we're going to have to leave that first round to them. So I'm just going to go for the Tinning with the, the Druids here. And just let it go like that. So uh, yeah, let's see you guys at the end of this first round. Because there's not going to be too much happening. And then we get the Beast, but we don't have... Oh, okay. That was unexpected. So I guess... Uh, his dinner was ready or something like that. Um, let's go into another match because I haven't been able to show anything. Okay, second attempt. And that sounds like Northern Realm, so that might be problematic. But I guess we'll see what we're going to do against that because Shield Wall is a bitch to fight against. But our hand looks a bit better than the previous match. The previous match, if I didn't include this in the video, um, actually ended in a forfeit. So after just a few cards, it wasn't even something that I did right. Um... Hmm, that's an interesting hand. It's pretty good uh, cards-wise. Let's get rid of the Plunderer. Ooh, that's a double Preacher. 
Let's get rid of that. Yeah, and that's usually my go-to mulligan. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, let's put the armor track car there first. And get our cycles going. Um, I have Sigdrifa's right, so I don't need to be too afraid to start playing defenders already. The question is, is this going to be Devotion Northern Realms or not? Because that's going to make a difference. Because the, the biggest weakness of this deck is actually getting hit with a Kogati Heatwave either on uh, the Gedanit card or the Draco Turtle. Because the Draco Turtle, you can't revive it then anymore. Then we get Radovitz Royal Guard. So that's a basic first play. Um... Okay, fine for now. Let's play our classic priest. And I'm actually not gonna boost the priest because I have a second one in the bag if I need to. So I'm guessing we're gonna get a boiling oil now. No, we don't. Interesting. Interesting. That means that we're just gonna play the crow mother now because the crow mother is just eight points that we get. There we go. And then I'm going to put the second priest next to the crow mother. I think he's going to let the priest go. Because they know they can just take them out with any of their dueling cards. If they want to. Just thinking of my options here. I want to take out the crow mother because I can get her back if needs be. Grammist I should keep for the last rounds. So I can purify the defender status. Um, hmm. With Raynard on the field, that also gets interesting. But not that more interesting. I'm just gonna, yeah, let's just play this Fall Blood Priest right next to the Crow Mother. And then protect that, um, the Air Armor Trackar. Uh, let's protect the Priest with the Veil. With the crystal skull. Okay, there we go. Can you please? I heard the noise and everything, but it, for some reason it didn't end the turn. Okay. So the frigate keeps going. Obviously, we got the Tridem infantry unit, which... Oh yeah, it gets boosted, but that's... Only once now. Question is, do I want to play that defender already? I can play Delirium, because Delirium will get me an extra healing point. It's not the end of the world there. Hmm. Kind of stuck on what I want to use. So let's just use Delirium on that row. Let's hope that we don't hit the armor too much. It's pretty good. Um, that's basically it. And now we have two uh, damages, so the Drakkar goes up to two every time he loses his armor. So that's good. Cycles are going. I'm guessing we're going to get hit by one Duelists before this is over. Um, but if they don't go over my point total now, might as well just pass. Yeah, okay, so that's the zeal for the... Yeah, I've seen this before. They're going to use that Engineer to get the zeal on the Duelists. Probably... Um... Yeah, the, the, the Seltkirk. So yeah, I'm going to have to pass here because he's going to destroy one of my priests. Yeah, I don't really care. Okay, there we go. They're going to get lost, say, with this, which is never good against Northern Realms. But yeah, it's it's a hard matchup against the shield wall. Um, and to get the correct Marine, but that's a misplay, I think. That is not going to help. That is not going to help. No, that's a big mistake. Yeah, because I go over. Ooh, <laughs> we got another forfeit. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's something that can happen. Um, your opponent can completely miscalculate what you're doing. So yeah, because of the uh, the two blood thirst, my drag car went up to two points and not one. So yeah, even one would have, wouldn't have been enough because then we were at equal points. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't the best decision there. Okay, um, let's try a third match then, because I really want to show off something. Now, we got to be honest, this has never happened before. This is better, by the way. Because um, I can at least show off what I can do against Tom Congregate. 
So we won twice, that's good, but one was a forfeit and the other one was also a forfeit but because they were just, yeah, they completely misplayed. So mulligan wise, uh, definitely the Crow's Eye, you can get rid of that. Um, and then of course the Terku Plundre if you would have that. But right now, this look actually looks pretty good. Uh, I don't want to try mulligan, mulligan, mulliganing, mulliganing again. Because if I get that second Crow Messenger, I lose the thinning options. So I'm just going to keep it at that. I have to track with Turtle, I have Ganadith, so that's Ganadith, Ganadith. First the D, then the N. I'm babbling again. There we go, Congregate. So that should be simpler. So it's a crime combination Congregate, so basically the classic Congregate combo. Um, there's no coins on the field just yet, so I'm guessing I can just start with a Drakkar to just take any damage that they want to do. Because of course that boost on the Halfling means that they have quite a lot of crime cards in their hand. The first one is the Cleric. Immediately transforming Salads. These are the words of scripture. Fine, it's not a problem at all. Um, let's start, but the Priest is going to be a prime target to get hit with something like Payday. Um, let's just get some Tinning first. I don't need to start the cycle too early. They were on blue coin, we were on red coin, so that's good. We don't need to go over it per se. Aha, Horson. Horson. That is interesting. So that's only one. Might as well take out Horson there. Uh, Horson Sr. There's not much else I'm going to be able to take out for six points that efficiently so let's just do that i don't need to take out that uh, cut up because the cut up will just damage randomly so every time i get hit on the drag card that's just in my advantage if okay that's not that good but regardless regardless so let's put the priest down because i can actually do that because i have um ermion to pull the uh, resurrection if i need to so that's 2-5, so I'm guessing I'm going to get Payday now. Yeah, there we go. That was to be expected. On the Drakkar or on the Priest? On the Priest. That's fine. Uh, so now, as I just said, we can use Ermion to pull the Resurrection out. Uh, play that. We get, a, we get a heal from that as well. There we go. And then the Priest on the Drakkar and we get that loop going again. So now we get 19 points versus 26. And we only need to play like five points um, to get ahead, even less. We only need to play three points, so that Berserker would be fine. So that's a forced excommunication. That means that they don't have a lot of options in their hands. That is, that is perfect. Because that's not going to be enough to try and overtake me. Um, so that's 34, but I have a nice cycle going, so if I just play the Drum and Berserker now... We get another passive damage, that's on the armor sadly, but... Again, 10 points is not, uh, not a problem to get over. And then we get a Vivaldi bank, so that's two tutors already. They're running out of ideas, I think. So that's another payday, so that's going to go on to the priest, and if they're really lucky, that's also going to hit. No. No. Okay, so now... See, my hand isn't good enough. I, I need to use those cards later on. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I have a, still have that nice cycle going, but even with that... Uh, I'll only have three points from the cycle now, because the armor is gone from the drag car. So that means I need to do 12 points with two cards, which is possible. Definitely possible, not a problem at all even. Um, and I could do that with the... No, no, I'm not going to go... I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Let's just... Uh, let's just pause. I don't want to overplay here. Um, they wasted a nice amount of cards. I kind of forgot about the Berserker as well, so that was going to be three more points. But even then I was going to waste some of my stronger cards and I want to just keep that for the very end here. We haven't seen any signs of devotion just yet. And there we have Geralt. Uh, so I have basically all the cards that I need to win this. So let's get rid of the Crow's Eye. 
Uh, if you can get the Crow Mother, that would be even better. Um, the only problem is if they try to push. Because then I would only have one Dryad. Uh, dr druid. Not Dryad, Druid. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, they're gonna go for it. Okay. Okay, they're gonna go for it. That's fine. I think I should be fine just by resetting the Fallen Knights after this. Um, hmm. I'm gonna play the Draco Turtle now. Because um, that's gonna give us... Alright, no, gonna be... Get an eat, get an eat. I could do get an eat as well, but that's gonna be overkill. Uh, I just wanna push them hard enough. They put two fallen knight because they have they have another fallen knight in their hands. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I can pull that back. Um, so that was actually very good because they wasted Ulrich on that. Um, and there we go. Ended that up at five five. So that was weird. If you wanna push, you really need to push further than that. Because that was a good setup, I wasn't able to take out any of those, but with Geralt I would have been able to uh, earn out of that. But now, I need to be careful, yeah, okay, that I have two Dryads. Uh, tri I said Dryads again, Druids. I won't have much use for Delirium, unless of course we get another Fallen Knight on a single row. And if I don't pull, what's the chances of me pulling another... They're actually pretty good, I have four more in my hand uh, in my deck so that's kremist yeah that's okay that's okay okay um so this is how you should probably do this so let's first do the covenant of steel like that uh and that's the first move so just play that defender so you're protected from any karate heatways that would be coming in um but I think, no, we saw there actually is no Karate Heatwave, so that's good. Um, and there we have the Fallen Knights. I should probably just use Delirium on that final, uh, that Fallen Knights. Yeah, because he's going to go really high. Even with Urden, I don't really want to risk that, so... If I can take it out, I can take it out, so there we go. There we go. So that's the Fallen Knight down, we should have protected that. I should have protected that with something else. Because I know the Giga Scorpion decoction is gone, so the only option was Delirium there. So yeah, for example, with that. Even though you lose those two points from... Well, the three points from the Intimidate and the Spawn. It wouldn't have been worth it. But now we have the Gatherneath. So that gives us one creature. And we're going to bolster that with a second one in a minute. Um, it's always best to just stack your preachers so you get uh, one preacher and then the second one on the first um, well, chapter of your scenario. So you get that double boost immediately. So then we get Jacques. And he's just going to spawn two and he's not going to have extra coins on that. He actually does have an extra coin. Ah, he's going to just spend that to boost Jacques. Fine. They know I don't have Giga Scorpion Decoction anymore so that shouldn't be... That much of a problem. We have one Intimidate, but nothing else. I think I kind of have this. Maybe my Geralt Urden will be kind of dead, but I guess we'll see about that. So, next up, Clo Clan Preacher. Clo Cro Clan Preacher. There we go. Um, I'm going to put that over here. And then play the crows there as well, because I want to kind of spread out my points a little bit. Just to avoid getting hit. I can't get hit by Geralt Urden, so I'm just wasting... Yeah, I put that out in the open for nothing. Not that much of a problem, but uh, you probably shouldn't do that when you're uh, playing this deck yourself. Uh, if you know that it's uh, a Devotion deck, because we know it's a Devotion deck, because of the boost that Ulrich did on the Fallen Knight in round 2. Now... It's really important that right now you don't play a druid because, of course, we don't want to risk... Uh, well, we want to use that Murdrum we get from the Gedaneath, so the last chapter, on the Draco Turtle. We know we still have the Draco Turtle, so that's what we're going to do next because we have that double boost from the Resurrection. And we're going to play the Draco Turtle behind our Defender. So that is perfect. We get a double boost on the Preachers 
and we're already quite a ways ahead and we still haven't used our leader ability just yet. Um, so even if there is poison coming in, which is a possibility with Syndicate, we still have Gramis to counter that. Uh, but it doesn't seem like we're going to be getting that anyway. So let's just play uh, Gramis. That's going to spawn the merge room. We're going to do with that on the Draco Turtle. You can already see how big those points are starting to get already. Might as well uh, purify the, um, the Veil from Jacques. Just to terrify my opponent a bit more. But yeah, I don't think they'll be able to do anything about that. Because it's a Devotion deck. Uh, you know that there's no real big uh, damage dealers in uh, in Syndicate, um, and that's just going to spawn more Firesworn Salads because they want to boost that with uh, Bolt. The Artifacts... They're going to use the Artifact immediately? Yeah, okay, that's fine. So Urden is going to have its uses in a minute, because all those coins are also going to go probably into Shark. Um, so now... We actually went to 17 points with the Draco Turtle, which means that Jutta is also an easy 12 points. Exactly so that goes up next, um, and let's uh, end the turn there. And then the final move is going to be playing Murderum again, which gives us 4 and then 12 points, so 16 points in one go. Uh, on top of what Erden, Erden is going to do, and I'm guessing I'm going to just have to put Erden on... I think it's pretty equal right now, because that shark has, an, has only been boosted by two. Same with the Brawler. And everything else got two boosts, so... That's just a procession of penance, and he's probably gonna save their coins, yeah. And I'm pretty sure the last one is gonna be the... Um, the Dies Irai. So the group boosting thing. Um... So, it's either 8 points that I reset, or 2 for another 8, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's just play that on the back row. And then play Merge Room on the Draco Turtle again. And I don't know what this is going to be, so it's going to kill something. It's going to be close. 23. It's going to be close. Because he's gonna kill, he's gonna kill a crow. They're gonna kill a crow, but then we get—it's just a one-point boost, right? So I don't think they'll make it. They'll get another hit. That is a fire sworn deck. I don't think I made it because he can boost yeah. Shock. Ooh, that was really close. That was very nicely done. Okay, but I did manage to uh, show you how this deck works. Um, actually, beat shield wall into a forfeit, which is uh, not that much of a problem. I think I just also finished the journey on camera here, so that is really, really nice. Um, so yeah, there we go. And we actually went to um, level 101, and yeah, my MMR just dropped down a little bit there because of the loss. I'm just going to claim all those reward points, because that's going to be nice. So there we go, 20 points from completing all the weekly quests from the extended journey which was something I still needed to do. And then 10 points from reaching level 101. And then, yeah, the bandana because I completed all the quests. That's actually really nice to get that at the end of the season. That was, I think that, that match actually shows how strong this deck can be, even though I kind of got outplayed by the end. If I would have lost, say, I would have won that because Geralt would have uh, equalized the, the road that was completely boosted after that. But because um, our, our opponent was very smart in holding off on using those coins and using that DS Eri um, card at, until the very, very end, um, they actually got the upper hand and won by a few points, but it was close. It was a really enjoyable match. So let's look at the deck one more time. So again, if you know that your Draco Turtle isn't going to be taken out by uh, because you either have the Defender going or you know that it's a Devotion deck you're facing, you shouldn't be as scared uh, as you should be uh, in other situations. Uh, if you know that there might be a Karate Heatwave, don't play the Draco Turtle early, just wait until the very end. If you can play it at the very la as the very last card and just put that Murder Room on top of it, uh, you also get 17 points, so that is just more than enough usually in most situations. Um, it is actually so strong that I've even beaten a Keltullus deck without destroying Keltullus uh, at its own game, so just uh, by boosting the Draco Turtle higher than the Keltullus went. Um, so that was very nice, but uh, yeah, try it out for yourself, let me know what you think, 
And uh, if you have any options to improve upon this deck, let me know as well. As I said before, the link to this deck, to the Play Gwent website, is available in the description down below. And uh, talk to me if you want to discuss this further in the comment section down below. Uh, if you like this video, because this is uh, going to be it for today's episode, don't forget to leave a like on uh, YouTube right here. So using that uh, shiny button down below, uh, maybe even subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're looking for more, I have plenty deck guides uh, like this one on my channel right now. So for example, last time we did a Syndicate deck using both Hidden Cash, Horde abilities and the Bounty abilities to our advantage. But I also have decks, uh, Monster decks, uh, a Nilf Guardian Assimilate deck, a Nature deck in Squiretel. It's just all there for you to watch. So um, check that out if you want to. Thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Ditch. Goodbye.